Hello, my name is Shahryar Shahryari, and this is a lecture and series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is determinants, the definition of determinants. Um, the context is that we have an n by n matrix, and what we want to do is we want to assign a single number, which is called the determinant, is denoted by dit a, determinant of a, and this number packs a lot of information about the matrix. So for example, a will be invertible if and only if the determinant is non-zero. Or if we think of A as a linear transformation, if a matrix, we can always think of a matrix as a function, then determinant of A has information about how the, that linear transformation scales areas and volume. But here, all I'm gonna do is gonna give you the definition of determinants. Later, in later videos, we will talk properties of determinants, how to calculate them, and what the uses are. The plan for this lecture is first tell you what a permutation is. There are several ways of defining determinants, and I've chosen one way to do that. And for that, I need to tell you what a permutation is, what are odd and even permutations, what are elementary products, what are signed elementary products, and then I can tell you what a definition of a determinant is. And then I will give you some examples. So definition of a permutation. What's a permutation? If you have n objects, and usually we denote that by bracket n, the set one through n, n objects, you, a permutation of that, uh, that set is just an arrangement of that those elements in some order without any omissions and without any repetitions. So you just take your n things and you reorder them in some particular way, and that's a permutation. So for example, permutations of one, two, three, three objects are going to be things like one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, and three, two, one. How many permutations do n things have? Well, you have n choices for what to put in the first spot at the beginning of your permutation. After you've done that, you can't use that object that you just put at the first spot again. So you now have n minus one choices for the second spot and so on. And at the end, you will have n factorial choices. So for example, for three, we had three factorial six choices and I had listed all the permutation. Given a permutation, we have something called an inversion. An inversion occurs whenever a larger integer comes before a smaller one. So for example, one, three, two, four is a permutation of four and it has only one inversion. And that one inversion is three and two. Three is coming before two, three is out of place and that's called an inversion. And there's only one such inversion uh, for that permutation of four things. On the other hand, if you look at four, three, two, one, which is also a permutation of four things, it has six inversions because four is coming before three, two, one, that's three inversions. Three is coming before two and one, that's two inversions. And two is coming before one, and that's another one. And one plus two plus three, um, that's six. So there's six inversions. Based on the number of inversions, we split the permutations into two uh, subsets, even permutations and odd permutations. Um, a permutation is even, is if it has even number of inversions. And it's odd, if it has an odd number of inversions. For example, one, three, two, four, because it had just one inversion is an odd permutation. Four, three, two, one, because it had six inversion and six is even, it's an even permutation. Just as an aside, let me tell you that you can define odd and even permutations differently. In group theory, one defines the odd and permutation using transpositions. A transposition is a permutation where you just switch the place of two elements not switch to the place of everything, just place the, switch the place of two things. A permutation is even if you can get to it by an even number of transpositions. In group theory, we say that a permutation is even if it's a product of an even number of transpositions. And likewise, if you need an odd number of transpositions, an odd number of switching two things to get to it, um, then it's an odd permutation. If you define odd and even permutation this way, then you do have to prove something that's not actually that easy to prove, which is that there's no um, permutation that's both even and odd. That doesn't follow immediately from the definition that will need a proof. We are not going to use this definition um, in, the, in this talk, but um, in my group theory um, lectures, you can see um, this definition and also the corresponding theorem. So now I can finally get to matrices. Again, remember determinants are going to be a number assigned to a matrix, and now I will be able to talk about that. So we start with an n by n matrix, so it has n rows and n columns, and it has n squared entries. And you pick an entry from row one. Um, then you pick an entry from row two, but you should make sure that you don't pick one from the same column as, um, as you've picked the, the first one. And you could picking 
an entry from each row. You just go down from row one, row two, row three. And in each row, whenever you pick one, making sure that you never use a, a, a column that you've already used. And um, you find the product of those things. And that's called an elementary product of this matrix. So the, the entries are picked as if you were you were placing rooks on a chessboard in a way that the rooks would not attack each other. So no two no two rooks on the same row, no two rooks in the same column. So one more time, an elementary product is a product multiplying n entries of your matrix. No two of them coming from the same row. No two of them coming from the same column. Okay. So for example, here's a three by three matrix, and five times seven times nineteen is an elementary product because no, there's three of them, one from each row and each column, and no two coming from the same row or two uh, the same column. It's three times seven times 23, or one times 11 times 23, or five times 11 times 17, or three times 13 times 17, and finally one times 13 times 19. These are all elementary products. How many elementary products are there? Well, if A is N by N, there's N factorial of them. Why? Because on the first row, you have N choices, the second row, you can't use that column. You now have n minus one choices. This, the third row, you have n minus two choices. You go down and you get um, n factorial, just like permutations. In fact, if you start with an elementary product, write down the column number in order. So you start from the first row, pick an element. Maybe that was from column 47. So write 47. Then the next column, maybe you took it from column 23. Write 23. Write the column numbers in order as you're coming down the matrix, and that gives you a permutation of n things if your matrix n by n. So, for example, if you picked five times seven times nineteen, then five was from column three, seven was from column one, and nineteen was from column two, and so you get the permutation three one two, and that happens to be an even permutation. Um, for three times seven times twenty three, you. In the first row, you pick something from the second column. In the second row, you pick something from the first column. In the third row, you pick something from the third column. So the um, uh, the permutation you get is two, one, three, and that's an odd permutation. Okay, so what? So that allows me to define what I'm what I call signed elementary made products. And what are those? So you have an n by n matrix. You pick an elementary product. What is that? You pick n elements one from um, each row and each column, no, no two elements from the same row or two columns. It has one entry from each row. Record the column row numbers in order. Starting from the first row, which column did you pick? Second row, which column you picked? And that gives you a permutation of one true n, as we have seen an example. If the permutation is odd, then you multiply your elementary product by minus one. If the permutation is even, you don't do anything. You keep the elementary product as is. The result, the elementary product together with this plus or minus that you have at, you, you have multiplied by is called a signed elementary product. And knowing that, we can now define the, the, the determinant. What's the determinant of a matrix? So you start with a matrix, n by n, a square matrix. Determinants are only for square matrices. And you find all signed elementary products, signed elementary products. So you first find each elementary product. But, um, that means you take one element from each row and, e and each column, no two elements from the same row or the same column, find a product, and you decide whether or not it comes from an even permutation or odd permutation. And, and re depending on which one of those it is, you multiply it by plus one or minus one. How do you decide if it's an even or odd permutation? You count the number of inversions in that permutation. What's the permutation? You recorded the column number uh, of the entries you picked one in, in order from the first row on, and you add a permutation. Um, after you get all the signed ele elementary products, you add them together. You, so you find the sum of all the element, signed elementary products. So you find these products, but then you add them. And the answer is the determinant. And again, it's denoted by dit, parentheses A, determinant of A. That's how we read that. So for example, if you have a two by two matrix, how can you pick two elements from that? There's only two ways to do that. You can only pick one diagonal or the other diagonal. So you can, the signed elementary products are going to be AD um, and minus BC. AD, that's uh, the, the, the diagonal and the, the permutation that goes with that is one, two, and that has no inversions. The other one is two, one. BC is the permutation two, one that has one inversion is an odd. 
permutation, so it gets a mi minus. These are the signed elementary products. Now you have to add them, and so the determinant becomes AD minus BC. The main diagonal multiplied minus the other diagonal subtracted. If you have um, a three by three um, matrix, then the signed elementary products are a whole bunch of them. There's three, three even ones and three odd ones. Like the first one, A11, A22, A33, that's if you pick the, the permutation one, two, three from the first column, from the second column, from the third column that has no inversions and comes as plus. This next one I have is A11, A23, A32. And um, that's the permutation one, three, two. And, and, and that's an odd permutation. And so it gets a negative one. And so the determinant will be uh, when you add all of these up. The definition of determinants is not very practical in terms of finding it because you've got to find all these elementary products and their signs and so forth. And so we will um, find using the definition, we'll first come up with some property of determinants and then we'll use that to find alternate methods of finding the determinants that will be a, a lot friendlier. But, but even so, the, the definition of the determinant is going to be as important because that's how we're going to find properties. And also in some cases, we will be able to find the determinants uh, directly. Like for example, if you have a matrix, a four by four matrix like the one I have or an N by N matrix, that's upper triangular. That means that um, below the diagonal, all the entries are zero. Uh, if you have a matrix like that, then what are the elementary products? How can you pick? Well, you can pick all the 24 elementary products, but most of them will be zero. Because if in the last row, you pick anything other than lambda four, that last entry, then the product will be zero. Because if anything in your product is a zero, then when you multiply them, you get a zero. So the only way to get a non-zero thing here is to pick that lambda four uh, from that last row. That means that for the third row, the only choice you have is lambda three, so as not to get zero. And the same thing with the, with the second row and, and the first row. And, and so the only non-zero signed elementary product is going to be lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, lambda four. That's an even permutation. It has no inversions. And so you, it just gets a plus. And so, for example, we just proved that if you have an upper triangular matrix, again, that means a matrix that below the diagonal, it's all zeros. The only um, action is happening on the diagonal and above. Um, or if it's lower triangular, same argument, if... Um, all above the diagonal is, is all zeros, then the determinants is the product of the diagonal entries. And another example of how we can use the definition to find determinants is if our matrix has happens to have a row of zeros. If it has a row of zeros, then when we find elementary products, we have to always pick something from that row and that something will be zero. And when we multiply by other things, you will get zero. And so all elementary products will be zero. Doesn't matter if they're um, even or odd, they're all zeros and the determinant will be zero. So these are two quick examples of how we can actually use the definition to find the determinant. Although in later videos, we will find better methods for finding determinants. In fact, this was the definition of determinant uh, video. And the next one is going to have basic properties of the determinant. Then we will going to talk about the interaction of elementary row operations with determinants. When you do elementary row operations, what happens to a determinant? Then we prove two major properties of determinants. That one, that if A is invertible, if and only if the uh, determinant is, is non-zero. And another one, that a determinant of a product, AB, is determinant of A um, times determinant of B. We do cofactor expansion, adjoints, the Ronskin and the relationship uh, between determinants and area and volume. This is the end of this lecture. Please like my video if you liked it. And um, if you would like to be subjected to more videos like this, um, please subscribe and keep hydrated at all times.